theory. Before we go into the experiment, there are a few things you should know. What is a fluoride ISC, and how does it work? Well, fluoride ISC is the use of an ion-selective electrode to measure the concentration of fluoride in a sample. The concentration of fluoride can be determined for a sample in the 0.02 to 2000 mg per litre concentration range. Let's take a look inside the ion-selective electrode. The ISC has three major components. 1. The reference solution. 2. The wire electrode. And 3. The selective membrane, which in this case is a lanthanum fluoride membrane. Now let's zoom in to the lanthanum fluoride membrane. The membrane is doped with europium fluoride to create holes just big enough for the fluoride ions present in solution to pass through. The ISC works by measuring the potential difference between fluoride ions in the reference solution and those in the analyte solution. This difference is generated by the movement of fluoride ions into the lanthanum fluoride membranes on both sides. The movement of fluoride ions is dictated by the difference in the concentration of fluoride for both solutions. For example, if there are more fluoride ions in the reference solution side than the analyte solution side, then the net difference measured will be positive. If there is a greater concentration of fluoride ions in the lower membrane, the net difference measured will be negative. Investigation 1. How to measure fluoride reliably using ion selective electrodes. This part of the experiment involved investigating the effects of other ions in solution while measuring for fluoride. To do this, we simply mixed samples of fluoride stock solution with solutions of sodium chloride, EDTA, aluminium sulfate and sodium hydroxide. We then observed the subsequent effects of each solution. So first of all, it was found that 5 mL of 0.1 molar sodium fluoride by itself resulted in a voltage of negative 61.7 millivolts. Secondly, the same amount of sodium fluoride plus water in a 1 to 100 dilution resulted in a voltage of negative 20.8 millivolts. With the addition of EDTA, there was an apparent decrease in potential. This can only be explained by contamination of the membrane which could be due to the poor method of cleaning the electrode. Next, we added sodium chloride. We observed an increase in potential that would have been caused by the difference in activity, which ISC detects, between the chloride and fluoride ions. This can be resolved by using an ionic buffer such as TISAB to stabilize the activities. Thirdly, we added sodium hydroxide in chronological volumes into three vials. We observed an increase in potential with increasing volume of sodium hydroxide. This observation can be explained by the similar ionic radius of hydroxide ions and fluoride ions. Hydroxide being 133 picometers and fluoride being 129 picometers. Not only that, but they have the same charge. This means that hydroxide ions are able to complex with the lattice and therefore interfere with the results. This can be resolved by using an acid-base buffer solution to keep the pH out of basic levels. And lastly, the addition of aluminium sulfate resulted in a decrease in voltage. This is because the ionic strength of the solution has changed. Subsequently, much like before, the activity of the fluoride ions is also changed and hence measurement is affected. For part two, we quantitatively analyze samples of tap water and seawater. This is done through construction of a calibration curve. The curve is produced by making up standards through the serial dilution method from a provided stock solution of fluoride with a concentration of 0.1 molar. The potential for each standard is taken down in triplicates and is plotted against the concentration of the standard. The calibration curve is in two parts. The pink line indicates the dynamic range, whilst the blue line indicates the points past the limit of linearity. 
We then take triplicate measurements of a provided solution of seawater and tap water. Through the Nernst equation, we are able to relate the potential to the concentration of the fluoride ions. So the fluoride concentrations came out to be 0.73 mg per litre for the seawater, 0.5 mg per litre for the tap water, and 0.65 mg per litre for the QC. TISAB stands for Total Ionic Strength Adjustment Buffer. The addition of 5 mL of TISAB solution to each of the standards, seawater and tap water, is used as a buffer to help keep the activity coefficient constant and therefore increase the accuracy of the readings. The percentage error for the QC is found by subtracting our true value QC, which is 1 mg per liter, from our measured QC value, which is 0.65 mg per liter, and dividing that by the true value and multiplying by 100. This gives us an error value of 35%. The precision is determined by the analysis of the replicate measurements. The percentage RSD is calculated by the standard deviation divided by the mean or multiplied by 100. Investigation 3. Analyzing a sample of toothpaste. The mass from weighing our toothpaste sample was 0 0.5004 grams. This was then dissolved in about 100 mils of water to extract the fluoride ions from the toothpaste. Then once again, measuring the potential and entering the value into Excel. As you can see, the concentration came out to be 3.9 mg of fluoride per litre. Converting this into percent weight per weight, you get 0.08%. Colgate's label indicated 0.22% weight per weight of sodium fluoride and so we need to adjust for the sodium by calculating the percentage of fluoride and multiplying that with the stated concentration. Therefore, the fluoride concentration according to Colgate was 0.1% weight per weight. This means our measured concentration is lower than the stated concentration. The discussion. The relative standard deviation of the QC measurement was 0.08% and the relative error was 35%. Thus, while our measurements were quite precise, the accuracy of them was not great. Some errors which can account for this low accuracy are the overuse of the ISC electrode, which has caused the desensitization of the electrode's measurement capabilities, therefore giving skewed results. Poor cleaning of the ISC electrode after and before each new measurement. This may have led to the presence of residue on the membrane, which could interfere with any further measurement. Drifting voltmeter readings. The potential difference was not always stabilized before the measurements were recorded, therefore giving skewed results. The results for tap water showed that the sample contained 0.50 mg per litre of fluoride ions. This value is below the acceptable concentration in drinking water for Melbourne. The results for seawater showed that the sample contained 0.73 mg per litre of fluoride ions. According to Wikipedia, the average concentration of fluoride ions in seawater is approximately 1.1 mg per litre. However, the range of fluoride concentration is anywhere between 0.86 to 1.4 mg per litre. Hence our samples seem to fall outside the general range of fluoride in sea water. And lastly, the toothpaste. The fluoride concentration was found to be 0.08% weight per weight, which was lower than the advertised value of 0.1% weight per weight. This difference can be explained by possible errors in the preparation of the sample. When mixing and dissolving the toothpaste, the bubbles that were formed had to be taken out prior to filling the volumetric flask. This removal of bubbles may have caused the sample to be less concentrated and therefore explain the lower vision. Overall, the experiment was a success in investigating the theory and problems associated with using ion selective electrodes. Thanks for watching.
Happy birthday to you. Oh yeah! Happy, Happy birthday! His birthday today. Ugh. Come on.